Hello guys and welcome back to my channel. My name is Lucia and this is Lulu's Leaves. In today's video, we are going to be going over some controversial plants and I am going to be spilling some tea. I do try to avoid drama on my channel and while this video isn't going to be drama centric, I definitely want to get the word out about the topic that I am going to be discussing in today's video. I'm going to be going over some plants that I have recently seen being relabeled and they're not being labeled for proper reasons, they're being relabeled to make more money. And that is a big issue in the plant industry. I know you guys know plant prices have been going through the roof. I do wanna say though quickly, if you do see a seller selling one of these plants, don't immediately get angry with the seller because a lot of these new nicknames for plants are actually coming from the sellers that they buy from overseas. So just keep in mind that some of these sellers might not understand that these are the same plants and hopefully some of them will watch this video and I can help them out and let them know. I also do wanna make a disclaimer that I might be wrong about some of these plants, but for the most part, I'm pretty confident that these are not actually different plants than the originals. If you guys are not already subscribed to my channel, definitely don't forget to click that red button down below. Give this video a thumbs up if you enjoy it. I also have YouTube memberships if you'd like to join. There's an awesome Discord group chat available and you gain access to some extra content at the lowest tier now. So definitely if you're interested, go check that out by clicking the join button or the link in my description down below. Lastly, I wanted to thank the sponsor of today's video, Plantea. Plantea has sponsored my channel before and you guys have absolutely been loving their products. So I thought, why not help get the word out to more of you guys. Plantea specializes in these adorable little humidifiers that make a beautiful ecosystem for your plant. One of the biggest issues that I've had with bigger humidifiers and why I don't use them anymore is because they really affect my own air quality and create a really muggy feeling in my rooms. Because these humidifiers are short throw humidifiers, it means that they're only going to surround your plants. And if you focus them directly on your nice, beautiful plants, they will thank you for it. The humidifiers come in white, navy blue, also a light blue and pink, but I do believe that the pink and light blue will be discontinued relatively soon. So if you wanna get your hands on one of those, definitely do so before they do get discontinued. These guys are so quick to fill up and they also last for up to 10 hours if you use them on their alternative mode, which is what I prefer definitely because it saves me time filling them up. I've heard a lot of really great feedback from you guys telling me that you bought these and you're so happy with your purchase. So thank you to all of you guys. It really, really helps me out. And I'm so happy that you guys are loving your humidifiers. But if you haven't already got your hands on one of these guys, check out the link in my description. There's currently an offer to buy two and get one free. And I believe that it's only running until the end of this week. So definitely take advantage of that while you can. If you are trying to raise the humidity level in your entire room, I do recommend that you get more than one of these because they are short throw. They are only going to affect the plants within their vicinity. If you guys have any questions about the Plantea humidifiers, leave them down below. I'll be happy to answer them and I will get back to you as soon as I can. But yeah, thank you again to Plantea for sponsoring today's video. So the first plant that I wanna talk about is one that a lot of people have gotten sucked into. And I am almost positive that this is not a different plant. And even if it is a different plant, 99% of the people who are selling these plants under this name do not actually have that plant. I am talking about the Philodendron Pink Princess Black Cherry version. This plant is said to have darker leaves and the leaves almost come out like a blacky purple color. This is not actually a different plant all on its own. This is just a plant that is growing in different conditions than your typical philodendron pink princess. I will tell you, this is a very beautiful type of philodendron pink princess, but it does not deserve its own name and it also does not deserve its own price tag. 
I've seen a lot of people selling these black cherry pink princesses for a lot more than you would see a typical pink princess go for. And that's just really, really sad considering the prices of pink princesses have shot through the roof on their own. I definitely do think that the pink princess market is calming down a little bit as of recently, but this black cherry pink princess is still looming and it does definitely upset me because I don't like seeing you guys purchasing plants that are identical to ones you already have just because they have a new fancy name on them. And it's not your fault for buying it because obviously it's marketed differently and we want what we want, but anyone can really achieve this look. I don't know the exact way to get there. It's probably due to lower light. When you have plants that can change color, it's usually due to lighting. So I would stay away from this plant until it is proven to be its own plant or at least if there's any proof that the seller can give you that this is a different plant, but definitely don't go spending extra money on something like this when you could have just a regular philodendron pink princess. The next plant that I wanna talk about is another one that I have seen coming from overseas. A lot of people unknowingly buy this plant as something else because they believe it's something else, but this is just a regular version of this plant as well. I am talking about the Anthurium crystallinum red stem. This plant is not different from the Anthurium crystallinum that you guys have in your home. I wanna make it clear that this is also not the Anthurium crystallinum red. The Anthurium crystallinum red is an actual different plant from your typical Anthurium. It comes in with blood red leaves, the veins stay red on it, and there's a lot of different characteristics to that plant. But the Anthurium crystallinum red stem is not a different plant from the ones that you guys have. If you are looking at importing plants, make sure that you do understand the difference and you're not buying one of each. And definitely don't be spending more money on an Anthurium red stem because it has the word red stem in it. It is unfortunate, but I do see a lot of people getting scammed by this red stem crystallinum. And I just wanted to give you guys some information because it's definitely not its own thing. A lot of importers are just adding on extra words and descriptive words to make you guys think that they're completely different plants but all they are are descriptive words. They aren't actually the proper names for these plants. So while we can't really regulate that because there are a lot of people just selling out of their backyards, at least you guys can just be a little bit more educated and know that that's not a different plant. The next plant that I have seen circling is one that bothers me a little bit more than others and I don't know why that is. I'm talking about the Philodendron Gloriosum Zebra. I have a philodendron gloriosum and let me tell you, there have been leaves that have come in looking completely normal, your average philodendron gloriosum. And then I also have leaves come in that look a little bit more veiny, a little bit more like this zebra gloriosum. Gloriosums definitely do vary in color, in size, in almost everything, but that does not mean that they are all different versions of this plant. They're just probably grown in different situations, whether that be lighting, humidity, all of the above. And while these zebras do look very beautiful, I want you guys to know that you can probably achieve that in your own plant as well, or it might just happen naturally. I also wanna mention, I really don't have any issue with people selling these as zebras, as long as they're not triple the price. And that is what I've been seeing. I think I heard from someone who was looking at one and it was going to be something like $700 for a two leaf plant. Right now you can probably find a two leaf plant for about $150 to $200. So it's definitely a price hike compared to the regular Gloriosum. While I don't wanna claim that I'm any sort of expert, I just want you guys to be really, really cautious when buying these plants that you might have never heard of there's probably a reason that you haven't heard of them and that's because they don't actually exist. This zebra form has been coming out from one specific online seller and I'm not going to name them, but if you look it up, you can see that most of those listings are coming from that one individual seller. It's very likely because 
the seller is just trying to make a quick buck and name this plant something a little bit different to capture a few more people's attention. I definitely wouldn't recommend going out and buying a regular Gloriosum and also a Zebra Gloriosum because you will be having the same plant. The next plant that I wanna talk about is one that is a little bit controversial as well. I don't know that I've seen too many people selling this for way more than the other plant, but this divide definitely does exist. And I don't think that it's actually real. I think that this is just a ploy to possibly make a little bit more money. The plant that I'm talking about is the Harlequin Pothos. This is known as the Harlequin Pothos, but it's actually just a lighter and more white Mandula Pothos. I don't believe that there is anything genetically different between the two of these plants, but we've made a new name for it. This is very similar to the Marble Queen and the Snow Queen Pothos. The Snow Queen is actually not its own plant, Again, that at one point was being sold for a little bit more, but I think people have kind of stepped away from using the word snow queen. But this is another example of that where a plant with a little bit more white in it is given a different name and usually goes for a prettier penny. I can tell you from experience that the Mandula pothos varies so much leaf to leaf. So you're probably going to have at some point a Mandula pothos and a Harlequin pothos and wonder why. <laughs> it is because they are the same plant. Don't get sucked into buying a Harlequin pothos for more than you would a Mandula pothos. This is especially prevalent in the United States because right now you can get the Mandula pothos in whatever, a big box store, but this Harlequin pothos is a little bit harder to find. That is not the case in Canada. Mandula pothos are still a little bit more expensive than you would expect, but yeah. Just make sure that you're not spending extra money to get a more white plant that you will likely end up with in the future. The last plant that I wanna talk about is one that is honestly a huge scam and it's costing a lot of people a lot of money. Most of the other plants I talked about would only set you back maybe another hundred or two hundred dollars, but this plant here is ripping thousands of dollars from people's pockets without them truly understanding what they're buying. The plant that I'm talking about is the Philodendron Jose Buono. <laughs> This plant is being marketed as the Philodendron Ilsemanii over and over again, and it is completely not the same plant. The Ilsemanii has very distinct characteristics. The leaf shape is very different from the Jose Bueno, and the variegation is usually very different as well. Unfortunately, a lot of people who don't know about these plants get sucked into paying way too much for them because they're sold as a philodendron imbi or the ilsemanii, or both. <laughs> and it's really important that we do educate the public on the differences between these plants because I definitely don't want people getting scammed. I remember seeing a video from Heart Shaped Leaves. I'm pretty sure that she bought this plant or maybe returned it, but she was, almost scammed by this plant as well. And yeah, a lot of the sellers are claiming that that's what they bought them as and that's what they will be selling them as. But in my opinion, that's not proper ethics. And just because you bought something as one thing doesn't mean you should sell it as another, even if you know that it's not that plant. So make sure before you do buy an Ilsemanii, if you can afford one, because they usually go for thousands of dollars, Make sure that you are putting in the time and understanding the characteristics of this plant before you actually go out and buy one. Well guys, I hope that was a little bit helpful for you guys. I'm sorry if you have any of these plants and you think that they're different. Let me know down below. I'd love to have a discussion about it. If you have any proof that they are actually different, I would love to hear it. But from what I know, none of these plants are different from each other. They're just marketed differently and they may look a little bit different, but they're not genetically different, if that makes sense. If you enjoyed today's video and you wanna see more content like this, don't forget to subscribe and give this video a thumbs up. Also, if you'd like to join as a member, you can do so by clicking the join button down below or the link in my description. 
But that's going to be all for me. Thank you guys so much for watching this video and I will see you next time. Bye.